I can just say, oh, let's try it. And then, you know, five minutes later, we have an initial prototype of the thing I want to try. And that, it's just an amazing feeling to be able to do that. So I, I think it's an exciting time. To start using these tools in your daily work as early as possible, like last year, preferably. You don't want to be late to this party. We're switching from using, you know, um, uh, an editor as a tool to, yeah, I don't need an editor anymore. Uh, then that's like a foundational shift. When we were studying machine translation between like natural languages, like English and Japanese, and this was in 2014, and one of my students uh, came to me and he said, well, you know, Python's also a language. Maybe you could translate from English into Python and solve programming contests. And at that time, that seemed kind of really, uh, you know, unrealistic to me or, you know, it didn't work at all, but we started trying then. And then over the past 10 years, we've been watching, you know, the technology really uh, explode. I think that right now we are seeing a tremendous paradigm shift in software engineering, which is akin to what has been happening in like 60s and 70s when uh, programming directly in machine code uh, has been gradually replaced uh, by programming in a higher level programming languages because uh, tools that can translate from this uh, higher level description of a program into the bytecode have appeared like compilers and interpreters. And uh, large language models right now basically allow us to build compilers from natural language, uh, the language that we use to speak to each other every day to these higher level programming languages, uh, therefore kind of going another level beyond of what was possible. And that has several implications for the future of software engineering. This is the year of agents. So if you are a, a software engineer, um, you either want to build agents or you want to use agents that other people have built to make you more productive. At the minimum, you know, go use all those wonderful tools that give you leverage, right? Uh, figure out, like, all of those tools are out there. And if you're not using those tools, um, I think that's a risk to be, um, to be out-competed and becoming obsolete as a software engineer. We're going from the bottleneck being your time to the bottleneck being not not just your time, but like your creativity and also, um, you know, your ability to verify that things are actually working correctly. So I feel like it's really increasing the velocity of how we can make software. And because software can do so many things, I think that will also enable us to do a lot of other things as well. What I think is going to happen is we're going to have uh, smaller teams that can punch above their weight. They still need to have some expertise in design and some expertise in product management, some expertise in software development. Um, but the overall team size could be much smaller to build an amazing product and put it in the market. So it, we're gonna see a bunch of that. If you start working with an AI tool or an AI agent, um, even if you're a skilled software developer, you might start to feel a little bit like a project manager because you have uh, several agents implementing the various uh, things that you're working on. And maybe you're working on the hardest feature of all the features that you need to implement, but then you have agents that are going and solving kind of the easier features for you. Software engineers who typically were working just on their own will also have this tool where they can reach out and say, oh, do this for me. So everybody will be a little bit of a manager, even if you're not like an actual manager of people. We will, of course, still need uh, good engineers who understand the whole system throughout, like how does the code work on the very low level, on the hardware level, uh, what are some higher level aspects of the system. But we, I think, won't need them as many as before, and they will be working on the most complicated stuff, and the easier stuff will be done purely by AIs. 
And I think that even the roles of these engineers will gradually transition from like pure software engineering into something more akin to engineering management. It's just that these people will be managing not other people, but AIs who will be actually writing the code. I definitely think AI agents are the future. That's why I'm working on them. I definitely think it's going to drastically reshape the process that we're working with. And, you know, it will increase our velocity, allow us to do more things in parallel. Um, and especially exciting is allow us to do all the things that we wanted to do, but wouldn't have been able to do if they didn't exist. So, yeah, for sure. So the word agent just means uh, some system that can meaningfully act in the world, like issue actions, observe the results of these actions and tweak its behavior accordingly to reach the desired outcome. So yes, agents are obviously a natural evolution of AI because we want systems that can not just advise humans how to do things, but just go and do these things themselves. And it's not a distant future, it is almost present. How much of the future are the AI agents? Um, I th think they are, right? I think that's where we're heading for, for the next iteration, uh, for sure. Um, I, I kind of think about it both from the user experience standpoint of like, okay, well, I have this agent and it does something. I mean, you can have a code review agent, you can have an agent that helps you write code, you can have an agent that, that like mops up, right? Uh, that does refactoring, that you can have an agent that, that builds tests, you can have an agent that's trying to reduce the size of your code, 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 code base. Um, there definitely, there's definitely a future there. Um, and a lot of companies are competing, they're going after that market. I don't think AI is going to completely replace human developers. I think what is probably going to happen is human developers are going to get a lot faster at doing the things they are going to do. And a human developer who's very proficient at using AI will continue to be better than uh, you know, AI on its own. So um, each developer will become a lot more productive, but uh, still we will need them to be necessary. But one thing I would urge developers to do is um, I think everybody's going to be using uh, AI, whether it's AI agents or AI code generation, within you know a year or something like this. And so it's a good idea to start using it now <laughs> and become very familiar with how to deal with it because it's not perfect um, and it still needs supervision. It's still you know you need to be able to explain what you need very clearly to AI so that the AI can go in and implement it in the correct way instead of making mistakes or other things like this. So this is a different skill set than developers have traditionally had, and I think people will need to adapt to this uh, you know, relatively quickly. I think that the most important thing is uh, to start using these tools in your daily work as early as possible, like last year, preferably. And then you should let your practices co-evolve with, uh, with the development of this tools and this way kind of stay ahead of the curve, uh, stay relevant, uh, stay familiar with these tools. You don't want to be late to this party because these tools, uh, well, already are and uh, will be even more of uh, productivity boosters. So if, if you can't use them, you will be soon uh, outcompeted by people who are like 10x or 100x more productive than you. You don't want that to happen. Now, what's the advice? I think the advice is learn other disciplines, maybe not that deep, but enough to understand what goes in there. And then AI will help you out. Uh, AI will give you that leverage to, to fill up the depth.